Looking back on this next story brings back memories of covering the Air Florida plane crash for the news and watching the heroic attempts to save the only five survivors. Let's take a look back at Joe Stiley's heroic story. My next guest uh, stared death in the eye. He and 83 passengers of an Air Florida flight crashed into the river after an icy takeoff. The height of rush hour in a severe snowstorm. An Air Florida Boeing 737, Flight 90, taking off from Washington National Airport for Tampa. In the severe weather, something goes wrong, and the jet shears off the tops of cars and trucks on Washington's 14th Street Bridge. The jet carrying a near full load crashes into the Potomac River and through a gaping hole in the ice, only debris can be seen. Helicopters circle desperately, searching for survivors. And we have one of them with us today. From Spokane, Washington, Joe Stiley, one of only five out of 83 people to survive that tragic crash. So nice to have you. <laughs> Joe, I tell you, we get on those planes and we feel that little rumble and all of us grab the seat. And I think that all of us fear what happened to you might happen to us. Tell us how it happened. When did you first realize there was trouble? Oh, I think I first realized that we had trouble before we ever backed out of the gate with that airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it, we had a blizzard going on in Washington, D.C. that morning, and we'd had, um, I think, a week or so of below freezing weather, and uh, the river, the Potomac River, was frozen. There was probably six, eight inches of ice on the top of the river mm -hmm. at that time, and we'd had uh, six, eight inches of snow that morning. And when I got to the airport, I was able to get a parking space at DCA, so that's kind of day it was. That lets you know there weren't many people traveling that day. Yeah. Did anything happen? You know how some people say, I, I had a feeling just before I got on that plane. Did you have any feelings as you look back? I don't think I had any feelings before I got on that plane, but I certainly had some feelings before. I, there were times when I wanted to get off that plane before it crashed. It took off. Well, it did not make it past takeoff very much, so it crashed into the river. And I mean, and I'm just trying to think, what, what does one go through? Take us inside that cabin. What happened? I knew there was trouble when we started down the runway because the aircraft wasn't accelerating normally. Um, as we went by the what's called the VOR station on the right going down the runway, I knew we were way behind schedule, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, executive assistant was riding with me, and I turned to her and I said, I think we're in trouble. Just do what I do. Uh, by which I meant, uh, you know, get into a good crash position and let's wait this out. And when you found yourself in that river, what, what was going on? Because I think you had broken like every bone in your body in this icy water. Actually, I was pretty badly broken up my left side, and Nikki was badly broken up her right side. She had been on the, to my left in the airplane. And I think when we had two impacts. We hit the bridge, the 14th Street Bridge in downtown Washington. Um, and I learned later a lot of cars that were on top of that bridge because they were stalled in the blizzard. Uh, and then we hit the water itself. Joe, when you were sloshing around in that water, they're freezing, and, and there are people dying, and there are people screaming, and there are rescue people coming, and it's your son's birthday. Yeah, it was. My, uh, my son Jay was 12 that day. What were you, what was going through your mind? I, um, I, I think I reverted to training. I had had some training in the military, and I'd been, you know, a lot of safety first kind of training as a pilot, and, uh, and I was executing the checklist. I think I was lucky because the uh, cold in the river uh, kind of kept the shock from setting in at the same rate that it would have. I, a good part of what was on my mind was to stay, stay in charge of myself. And well, let's, let's take a look at this video. Joe is <coughs> staying in control of himself and, and, and as all hell is breaking loose around him there. Explain what's going on, Joe. Well, by the time this uh, helicopter, that's a, a uh, Bell Ranger from the... Uh, Park Police, U.S. Park Police, uh, flew over from Anacostia across Washington. Uh, that's Nikki Felch that they're lifting off now, uh, who was a stewardess that was dumped into the river. She was sitting in the jump seat where the tail broke off of the airplane. Mm. And, uh, and, and she, she was relatively unscathed. The, the three of the survivors, I think, were dumped in. This is kind of the debris that was in the river after the crash that we had to come up through. Nikki and I came up from within the airplane. Now, this is me trying to hold on to Priscilla Torado. Um, and uh, every time we hit those ice packs, I kind of lost a couple ribs and a little bit of my grip on her. Uh, she had lost, she lost an infant son, her husband, and her glasses that day. Uh, 
Um, and uh, I towed her as far as I could, but I couldn't carry her any further. And Joe, then, I think it's amazing that half of your body is broken and you are helping other people trying to save your own life. Oh, wow. Well, those ladies uh, couldn't hold on by themselves. When the helicopter first showed up, he dropped life rings like that. This is uh, a fellow by the name of Lenny Skutnik. Yes. Uh, who jumped in. I remember him jumping over me to go in after her at that point. I think point. the nation was gripped to these types of shots back then. It's amazing. Joe, how do you feel about flying now? Well, I flew here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Quickly, quickly. Um, I was wondering, how long did it exactly take you to get back on a plane? Uh, <laughs> they put me on a plane to fly me from the East Coast. I lived in, in the D.C. area at the time. And my mom and dad lived out in Spokane, Washington, where I live now. They flew me out there when I, get, when I passed the uh, admission out of the hospital test, which means you can walk on crutches about 10 or 12 feet. And I threw a pulmonary emboli on the flight, a, a blood clot. And then, uh, so it was about four more months after that before they'd let me back on an airplane. Uh, but I, I'm a pilot. I uh, did a lot of flying before. And the main thing I did is I bought an airplane I could put all my kids in after that. <laughs> and I did all the flying. And if you think that's something, wait till we come back. You're going to see some amazing video from one of our past guests. You will watch as a jockey is violently thrown over the head of his horse while in the last leg of a race. Stay with us as we look back on more life-threatening moments caught on tape on The Rolanda Show. <laughs>